Morning guys. Um, today we are going to try to tackle answering the number one question we get. What do you think the number one question is going to be? Um, probably about money, right? Yes, I would agree. The main topic, the main question that everyone asks us and wants to know about is in relation to money. It's been two years since we've been selling the Caribbean and we're about to close that loop. So I think this is a perfect timing for us to talk about how do we afford the sailing lifestyle. And during these two years of sailing, we met with a lot of sailors and they all have different ways to fund their journey. Hey. We found that it breaks down into one of about four categories. The first category I think would be retired couples who have been doing the nine to five, working and saving up. And now that they're retired, they've got their boat and they're just living the dream. The second way I think would be people who have a job, but they can take time off. So maybe they work six months out of the year and then sail six months out of the year. And that works pretty well, especially if you're gonna be sailing around the Caribbean where there's hurricane season. The third one I think would be people who worked really hard for like five years and saved every penny or so and now they have enough saved up that they can go sailing for a year or two but plan on going back to work after that money runs out and the fourth and final category I think would be people like us which is what we did and found a way to make money while we travel but before we get into that we're gonna talk about how much money we had before we even started. So when Din and I met in university, we had nothing you would call real money. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we worked a lot of odd jobs in school uh, to pay the bills, but we definitely didn't have anything saved up. The day we graduated, that's the day we realized that we wanted to sail off to the sunset and buy a sailboat. But with no money, <laughs> we had to work our asses off for four months and saved up $10,000. We bought Uma for $3,000. We bought a working diesel motor that we ended up not being able to use for $3,000. With the remaining $4,000, it started to snow in Boston, so we put Uma on a truck and sent her to Florida. And that's when a good opportunity came around. We flew to Haiti for three months and worked on another architectural project that we had. And that gave us another $10,000, which was good because we were 100% broke at the time. I really think that the next scene we should be doing acro yoga. $10,000 may seem like a lot. And for us at the time, it was a lot, but we ended up having to stretch that $10,000 for an entire year of refitting our boat, which meant each month we were stretched pretty thin speaking of stretching in the two years after we graduated we made about twenty thousand dollars and half of that we used to fix up uma and the other half was for basic living expenses mm, that feels good <laughs> the day we finally left florida we had zero money left in our bank account but we had one twenty dollar bill we left with enough water, food, and supplies to last us exactly one month. We knew that by the time we made it to Haiti, we were going to have our first legitimate check from Patreon, which was going to be about 300 bucks. From that point on, our income from Patreon, YouTube, architecture projects, and other revenue sources have been increasing, allowing us to keep moving forward from country to country. At the start, we had a really tight budget. We rarely ate out and we had to choose our boat project very carefully. For most of the Caribbean, our budget was about five to eight hundred dollars a month and that included basic boat maintenance and check-in fees. So if a country was a little bit more expensive to clear in, we couldn't do as much work on the boat. Kika's favorite snack, Pico mm. de Gallo. By the time we made it to Grenada, we decided that our next major plan was gonna be to try to cross the Atlantic the following spring. Which meant we had a lot of saving up to do and some major upgrades to do on Uma. And of course, our electronics and salt water do not mix, so we're constantly replacing camera equipment and laptops. Which means each month we're spending a little bit more than we did when we just started. Sundowner time. Our budget now is more like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars, which includes more travel, more adventures, and being able to enjoy a few more beers at the local bar. Yeah. Yeah. And anything else beyond.
done that, we invest back into UMA. Another expense that we're going to have soon is uh, liability insurance. Throughout the entire Caribbean, we haven't needed liability insurance because we haven't stayed in any marinas. But our only insurance we've had is our two really good anchors. Um, but starting soon in the US and in Europe, we're probably going to end up staying in more marinas. And in the canals in Europe, we'll definitely need insurance. We also don't have health insurance because while in the US, we couldn't afford it. Uh, anywhere else that we've been so far in the Caribbean, healthcare and doctors and hospital is so much more affordable. For example, while in Curacao, if you remember, then had a kidney stone. And if we were in the US, a six hour visit to the ER probably would have cost a couple thousand dollars. But in Curacao itself, it only cost us $80. Ooh, it's cold. Last week, we mentioned that for the last three months, we've been focusing a lot of our time and money on upgrading UMA and while here in Mexico we're going to spend a little bit more time working on ourselves. And here in Mexico things are so affordable that we're going to take care of a few personal projects. These past few months have been really stressful and the sun and the dust have affected my skin pretty badly so my personal project this month is to focus on my skin. For me, it's gonna be all about working on my teeth. So tomorrow, bright and early in the morning, I've got an appointment with the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> well guys, today was a lot of fun talking about money, but it's getting pretty late. So I think we're gonna call it a night. Yeah, it's true. Tomorrow I've got pretty big day. I'm not so excited about it, but I will see you guys bright and early in the morning. Are you scared? I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It's uh, four o'clock in the morning, and today is probably going to be one of my least favorite days ever. Fix that. Yeah. The thing is, guys, I really don't like the dentist. I'm on my way to Cozumel to go see one of the best dentists in the area. And I'm getting a root canal and two crowns. Well, it's amazing how quickly one little action can turn your whole day around. Kiko always says smile at the world and the world will smile back and um, that little one little act of have a good day kind of changed my perspective on today and um, yeah feel a little bit less anxious about going to the dentist. Well guys, not gonna lie, that was pretty awful. Root canals suck. Uh, I have to come back in a week to get my actual crowns put in, but for now I am heading back to the boat so that I can sleep and let this half of my face come back to life. Yum. Well, I just got back from the dentist and my teeth are very sensitive still. So for the next couple of days, I'm going to be pretty much on a liquid diet, which is why we got the blender. It's not too bad. I like smoothies. Alright guys, we have a bit of a situation here. We've been hanging out with Jordan and Desiree for the past couple of days. You probably know them from their YouTube channel Project Atticus. If you don't know them, you definitely should check them out. They've been working on the boat just like us for the past couple of years. Uh, they started about when we started too, so we've been in touch for a while. And they are in Islam Mujeres and we are in Islam Mujeres, so things are good. But the other day we've been hanging out and they mentioned that they've never seen Moana, which if you know me, you know that Moana is my staple. So tonight we're going to have them over on Uma to fix that problem. Yeah, we're gonna have a 
Moana movie night. All right, go with that. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Well, I'm just gonna <laughs> camera hug, camera selfie hug. hug. Get a hug. <laughs> oh, you guys could really. This is fun. Ooh. It's a fish. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't give you a warning. No. See, that's. <laughs> And his name was Maui. Yeah. Hey! hey! What's up, everyone? Woo! We're hanging out with the awesome crew of Atticus, Desiree, and Jordan here. We're neighbors. We're boat neighbors. There was actually <laughs> right in front of Uma, I'm so we're gonna be neighbors for quite some time, a couple of weeks at least. So we're starting to think of all the awesome things we can do without killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have a day of challenges between Atticus and Uma. We want you guys to help us find amazing challenges that we can battle against each other. So comment yeah. below if you have any cool things like handstand competition or something yeah. a little more risky. Challenges. Yeah. Who can draw yeah. the best tattoo on each other? <laughs> There's only a couple of rules. The primary one being no touching of the hair or face. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, just, yeah. for just for Jordan. Comment down below and we'll pick up the best <laughs> the top challenges. Still here. Sorry, Dan's Jen. still here. <laughs> And uh, we'll make it happen. Sounds good. Cheers to that. And we're excited to hear your suggestions. Yes. Yes. Super excited. It's gonna be fun. We left with a dot. Nope. Okay. It's also good practice, readers.